Good morning, my fellow teachers. The man who spoke just now, he said he is not a teacher. But me, I am a teacher. And I have no regrets being a teacher. Uh, he's my boss. He's my boss. My immediate past deputy vice chancellor academic. Let me by this recognize you and then to thank you for speaking so well. Um, now, I will not, since I have my paper coming up to present, I will not dwell so much on these problems, but just to give a little overview. I'm not speaking like a stranger. I'm speaking as a teacher who has taught for about 38 years. These problems that we are talking about, we started talking about them from that time. And there seems to be no viable solution. So shall we continue to cry throughout life? Some of your predecessors cried over these things until they retired. Shall we continue? So in that regard, I used to encourage my fellow teachers that the problem we have in this country is the gap between policy and implementation. If you go to government policies on education and particularly on teachers, you will see very beautiful policy statements there. The National Policy on Education says that teachers are the ones that determine the height of any developmental agenda as it touches on human capital development. Government policy recognizes that you and I are very important. But how do you treat somebody who is very important? When you don't have enough money to pay salaries, you will pay other people. And the teachers who are the most important are the last to be paid. How do you treat people like that? He has hammered a number of things here for you to hear. So my concluding remarks are that your reward, my reward as a teacher, part of it is in heaven. But I want to tell you that a lot of it is still here. But when you talk about reward, reward is payment for service. Are you teaching your students and puppies very well? When you devote time to teach these students and puppies very well, when they grow up, part of your reward will come from them. As I am in my little way, I have been reaping a lot of rewards from students I have taught. How many days ago I needed to do something in a, in a Zenith bank? And I have a student, somebody who was my student, in that place. I just called, are you in the bank? He said, yes. As soon as I got to the gate, I said, I want to see this. He said, oh, pass, pass, pass. I want to say, hey, pass, 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 pass. When I went, he says, I sit down. I sat down. He got up and did everything I needed to do for me. Reward is not only a matter of putting money and giving you. There was one man from my village called the late Ambassador Oga Okwoche. He taught the late Stanley Abacha at Rumfa College in Kano in those years. Oga Okwoche was a teacher one level to the other until he retired. When Sani Abacha became head of state, he looked for him everywhere, 
found that old teacher and made him Nigerian ambassador to France. That's the reward of a teacher. And when you get that kind of appointment, the wrinkles in your head will all disappear. <laughs> you understand? And so, let's not be looking too much towards government. I was in Abuja a few weeks ago we were in a conference. And I spoke there and told them, that do you know the thing that even pains us more as teachers? When your fellow teacher becomes commissioner for education, the teachers will suffer more. When I say the everyone will say yes. Older people are more passionate about helping our cause than our colleagues. So what is in us? So the whole thing is about us as teachers. So my fellow teachers, just encourage yourself, motivate yourself, and do your work waiting for God to reward you in any way. And it will come. Do you understand me? It will come. So let me leave it at that and go to my paper. Uh, before I go there, I want to uh, acknowledge the organizers of this program. They are doing a great work and I thank them for the opportunity that I have to come once in a while to participate in this kind of training. As I'm here now, I am seeing some of my students. Abraham is sitting down there. Abraham studied physics education under me. Somebody is also here. Here, 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 here. And I used to boast that for being a teacher, there is no part of Benue State that we go. If there is a school there, somebody will know me. That's my only word on earth. If anybody wants to fight me and somebody who knows me is there, he will fight for me. Isn't it? Yeah. So, let's leave government alone and encourage ourselves and teach this student very well. Is that understood? Yes. My wife is also here. She is not a teacher. Uh, Mrs. Christy Eriba, she's an administrator. But at home, she teaches more than me. You can't be in our home and mess up. She will deal with you. <laughs> Mommy, you are welcome. All right. Um, my paper is about classroom management dynamics. Madam taught us something just now. She said, when you are marking script, marking script, after so so minutes, you stand up, isn't it? So can we stand up? You have been marking paper for too long. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Okay. Everybody sit down. Three, four. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's my pleasure at this time. Uh, I'm talking about classroom management dynamics. I see here that the school is one of the social institutions that we have and it offers persons provides for persons to acquire knowledge and character molding. The school is meant to give people knowledge as well as mold their character. That's why in the university, when you are issued a certificate, they said you are found worthy in character and in learning. So the children we are teaching must acquire this too. The school also is established uh, to stand as a special agency where people will take responsibility for the formal education of young people who should be committed members of the society. We we'll prepare these people, 
prepare these young ones so that when they grow up, they will become good members of, first, the community where they are born, and then the larger society. It is the lack of this proper training that has given rise to Boko Haram, banditry, armed robbery, and the rest of them that we have. So it is a call to us to sit up as teachers to ensure that we are doing our work well in school. That's just a picture of a school somewhere. Then, what I said are part of the functions of the school, all of these skill of reading and writing, all of these, the school teaches the young ones scientific methods and all of that. Next slide. These are things you can read later. All of these cultural change, when these children are in school, you expose them to the cultures of the community. Very soon we'll see some of those things in uh, some slides. That's part of what the school does. And it provi provides young children, young children with opportunity to participate in healthy games and exercises. School is not just for people to sit down and to learn and learn and learn. They are also exposed to some physical exercises, games, football, handball, and the rest of them. And it also gives them the opportunity to develop virtue. When children learn good virtues, learn good morals, they deviate from those evil tendencies, like I've mentioned earlier. So these are some of the functions of the school. Yes, the children are playing football. Next slide. These are cultural activities that take place in school, and they are very important. And a school building, or buildings are furnished in accordance with the age of group that it serves. When you go to a school that is just pre-primary and primary something, you look at the building for each of these class, you look at the furnishing for each of these classes, they are not the same. The furnishing for young, young people, if you see their chairs, as an elderly, if you sit down, your knees will touch your mouth. But for them, it is meant like that, to serve their purpose. And it is also set up with rules and regulations so that we can maintain order towards the achievement of educational goals. Where there is no order, nothing meaningful happens. So the school has all these overall functions to uh, perform. Then for the school... To achieve these objectives, we have looked at the objectives that schools are set up to achieve. Those objectives will not be achieved until we have a classroom which houses both the teachers, the pupils, and the students. Until we manage the classroom creatively. And who are the managers of this classroom? The teachers. And I'm talking about classroom dynamics. Dynamics is about changes. There are a number of changes that control whatever you do in the classroom. And the teacher is on top of the management of those dynamics. So we are going to be looking at some of those uh, dynamics. But before we look at those dynamics... I want to talk about the three eyes, the three eyes of the teacher. Everybody say three eyes. Three eyes. Three eyes. Three eyes. What are those three eyes? Again. The teachers. These three eyes define your function. You know, I am proud of being a teacher because one of the greatest men that ever lived was our member. Who knows him? Who knows him? Jesus! Everybody say Jesus. Do you know that he was a teacher? You know that he was a teacher. Very great teacher. So I'm happy to belong to a body where he also belonged. 
And if you read from the passage I have put there, can we read it together? When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Do you know what happened? These two men, Peter and John, demonstrated some qualities that got the people surprised. How come these people didn't go to school? How come that they are so bold like this? Then they say, oh, they have been with Jesus. So what does they have been with Jesus? What did he do to them? The life of Jesus impacted them. The life of Jesus influence them. And what happened? They imitated him. Are you getting the understanding? So, you are teachers. These children you are teaching, you need to impact them. You need to influence them. Because they are going to imitate you. my professor of blessed memory, the man who supervised my master's and PhD. Every time I saw that man in an outing, he was always in a complete suit. I'm not imitating him yet. That's not why I'm here like this today. Do you understand? I'm dressing like this because this is what my wife likes. Do you understand? That man was constantly in suit. No matter the weather, whether it is hot or it is cold, or the man was always like this. So one day, someone called to ask him, Sir, why are you dressing like this all the time? He said, when I was in secondary school, there was a teacher who was always dressing like this, and I liked him. And I made up my mind that when I grow up, I'm going to be dressing like this man. The man dressed like that until he died last year at the age of 75. That's the extent that what you are doing, the children are watching and they want to replicate. Unfortunately, we have very worst case scenarios where our teachers are teaching the students how to drink and wine. They are teaching the children how to join cultism. And they become the patrons of those students that have taught in cultism. Am I telling lies? They are also teaching them how to be immoral. A girl in primary school will have her teacher as a boyfriend, a be man friend, a be sugar daddy. What kind of evil is that? So, remember that you are in that class to make, to impact the life of the child you are teaching. What does impact have to do? That whatever that person is, what you are bringing to his or her life will change that person for good. That's what impact means. It's similar to influence. And then the children eventually imitate you. So the question, if I were you to ask is that, if the children I am teaching behave the way I am behaving, if I meet them, will I be happy? If you will not be happy, then do to them what when they imitate you and you see them, you can be happy. That's what the teacher is there to do. So please always remember the three eyes of the teacher. This is a classroom. See a teacher standing there. If you look closely, maybe some of you will know the teacher. But don't worry about it. I'm not the one who. So next slide. Yes. Now, when you are a teacher and you are in a classroom, 
to manage the pupils or manage the students that are under you. There are a number of dynamics that you will need to control. I have them in bullet points here, and I want us to quickly look at them. One of them is that the children that you are teaching, they need affection from you. How do you show this affection? Find out from them how they are feeling. Janet, why are you looking so morose like a donkey? No. This child used to smile before. Now she's not smiling. You should, if you are showing affection, what should you do? Who will tell us? What should you do? You will go near that child and say, ah, is there any problem? And that child will be free to tell you what is worrying him or her. And then you will be in a position to now solve the problem. After some time, you find that child smiling. And whatever you are teaching, the child will flow in. Show them affection. Avoid bullying or insulting them. That is very clear. Don't insult anybody. Be patient in correcting them when they seem to fail. As successful as you think I am today, as successful as you think Professor Omudu is today, he knows that he failed before. I failed. Chemistry 324 in the university. I had to carry it over. And even in carrying it over, I am not sure I passed it. It looked like I carried it over in 400 level. I'm not sure I passed it. I thought that maybe they just say, well, he has passed every other something. Let's not hold him because of this. Let's do like they let him go. Maybe that's what they did. And I graduated with second class upper. So as good as you think that result is, I have tasted failure. So when your children in class, when you say three times seven, what is it? And the child says it's 20. See your head like a... No, 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 no. Be patient with people who fail. I'm sure you have failed before too. Is that okay? Don't show preferential treatment among them. There are some teachers in the class. Only Alice is answering questions. Only Alice is answering questions. It's not only a problem of male teachers. Who I had a female teacher. Every question, okay, Sonny, please answer. Sonny, please read. Sonny, please do this. I'm calling the names of my classmates. So, don't do like that. Because the tendency is for us to concentrate on the bright ones to answer our questions. No, 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 no. Please manage this very well. Have I had the next slide? Yes. Give every learner a chance to try to learn by answering questions. When they ask questions, don't turn them down. Allow them to ask. Allow them to also answer. Sometimes when you ask a question, or maybe when a student or puppy asks you a question as the teacher, don't always be the one to answer the questions. Something has asked a question. Salome, can you attempt an answer to that question? It is me that she has, he has asked, asked the question. But I now say, Salome, can you give an attempt? When Salome does, if he doesn't get it very well, the extent to which she got it, I say, oh, Salome, you have tried. But can I ask uh, John to also make an attempt? Allow them to brainstorm like that. Then protect the weak one from aggressive males in class who want to bully them. <laughs> you have some big, big boys with big muscles who not allow the weak one to rest. Don't allow it. Then teach them good manners and insist that they use them. When I was in primary one, in 19... If you know it, I'll give you the charge card of 1,000 naira. 
They will make an attempt. Three people should make attempt. Okay, let me give you a clue. I got my PhD in the year 2000. I got master's in the year. Okay, let's leave that one. I got PhD in the year 2000. So when did I start primary school? Three people should make attempt. Yes. Wait, wait, somebody. Wrong. Wrong. One more chance. <laughs> My wife tell them. Then I will give her recharge card. <laughs> 1968. <laughs> so when I was in primary one, the teachers taught us and said, if you want to go and ease yourself, go and ask the teacher, excuse me, sir, can I go and ease myself? I didn't hear it very well. So I went and said, sir, can I go and ease myself? Everybody just laughed. So what we're saying is that teach them good manners. Let them do it very well. Let them use it. Then use the same stroke for the same offenses. No discrimination in disciplining them. Somebody messes up, you carry stick. Bam! Another one does. You just push him and leave him because you like that one. No. If two, three people commit the same offense, Give them the same type of disciplining. Is that okay? Then, be an example to them by dressing decently to class and insist that they do the same. Don't go to the next slide yet. When you are coming to class as a teacher, dress well. When you see your pupils and children, one button is on top of another one like that, stop them and say, arrange your button very well. No, 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 no. Some may even come and the zip is not uh, up. Tell them, please, pull up the zip. You understand? Teach them how to dress very well. Is that okay? Next slide. This is a teacher. You can see, you can see the mathematics that she's teaching there. Okay, let's see a better teacher. Next one. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. What do you are the children looking at the S that is on top there and the Y and the A? Are they looking at that? So the lesson is somewhere here. And what lesson is that? Next. How about this? So clap hands for this teacher. Teacher should be next slide. Uh -huh. They say, Why well, are you showing only us? We are women. Are we the only one who are doing this? Can't men also see how the men are dressing to class? Is that okay? So, when we talk about good dressing to class, your children are imitating you. You must be a good example to them, even in dressing. Next slide. Yes, we're talking about giving the students, everybody, a chance to try. So when you ask a question in the class, don't ask, don't say uh, Nathaniel, what is the capital of uh, Abuja? Huh? Genesis, what is the capital of Lagos? No. Ask the question to the whole class. And when you do, let all those who want to make a turn put up their hands the way they are doing. Let everybody have a chance. Then you can select them like that, like that. And when you are selecting, distribute your selection evenly. Get to the person who is at the back there. Ask him to try. I had a, 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 a mathematics teacher who was teaching us additional mathematics in secondary school. You know, additional mathematics in secondary school in those days was not a more and more subject. And it was not all of them were even doing it. It was only those of who are science students. This man will just be doing calculus and they, oh, the why the yes. then when he has finished he wants to ask a question and nobody is willing to put up his hand so what he will do is that he will do 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 and when he finishes he will carry his chalk and then do like this 
So the chalk will now come. If it lands on you, you are done to go and solve the problem. <laughs> so since we knew his style, since you knew his style, as he's solving, we are watching. <laughs> And when the chalk is coming, we will dodge. <laughs> we will dodge. <laughs> so we don't do those games. Sit down, Koro Koro, stand with your eyes like this and say, Samson, you. Eh? Philomena, you. Try. Is that okay? You ask from the back, ask from the side, ask from the middle. Give everybody uniform opportunity to try. And when they make attempt, Encourage them. Say, Kai, you made a good effort. But you see, it remains small for you to hit the something. That child is encouraged. That is made. But even what he's saying will not lead to the answer, but he's encouraged. Is that okay? Yeah, next slide. Aha. I was also talking about being patient with them, trying to answer their questions, move near them when they are doing class exercises, and they ask, are you getting it? Um, okay, just make more effort. You, uncle, where are you now? What are you doing? If, teacher, if children know that you are going to come to them to find out what they are doing, they will be serious. Next slide. So maintain general ambience in the class. Don't be a teacher that when the students are expecting you to come, everybody is G3. When I was in primary one, there was a teacher in primary school, in primary two. All of us, even though we were not in his class, the stories we heard from primary two, some of us didn't want to go to primary two because we didn't want to meet that man. He was a terror. So don't be the kind of teacher that there's no ambience when you are in your class, peacefulness, jovial, people are not smiling in your class. The class is a place for serious business, but seriousness is not all the time. Is that okay? All right? then uh, your attitude to all class subjects should be positive. Don't tell them that mathematics is too difficult. Some teachers begin to fail the student before the student fail. Physics? Who are you? When I was in the 300 level, our colleague said, don't think you are going to graduate. Oh. Don't think you are going to graduate until you meet Dr. T. T. Bamboe. That man? Ha! So we began to fear and when we got to that class, everybody, all this. And the man really came to class. He said, we're going to do tests next week. When we came to class, the board was very dirty. He came and started writing inside the dirty board. And we said, please clean it now. When somebody wanted to, he said, if you clean it, I will not rewrite it. Hi. <laughs> I scored the highest mark in his class because I feared him. So what we are saying is that, uh, don't tell people that anybody is difficult, any subject is difficult. Be punctual to your class and leave the class on time for your successor. Some people are enjoying their lessons so much that they are there, they are overstaying. Your colleague is standing outside to come for his lesson and you, you are just going, 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 going. No, 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 no. Go early to your class. Leave when you are supposed to leave. Is that okay? All right. Then use anecdotes. Tell stories to enliven your class. When you are even teaching sub topics that are difficult, by the time you introduce humor, by the time you tell a story that makes the children learn, it's good. So don't be such a serious teacher. Is that okay? Then they always recognize the weak and slow learners. They should not be ridiculed and all of that. When you give work, a class start to all the class, know that there are certain students or puppies who are slow learners. Give them time and encourage them to speed up gradually. Next slide. Avoid gender disparity expressions and actions. You know what I mean by that. Uh -huh. You're right. Everything should not be she, 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 when you, or he, he, when we are referring to everybody. Huh? All the genders are important. Let's recognize them. Always provide early feedback to performance, of performance to the learners. This helps to correct and confirm errors. That last sentence, correct and confirm errors, I got it from my professor. And what it says is that when you let the learners know how they performed in the last exercise early, it will help them to now know what they did wrongly and to also know why what they did was wrong. It helps in learning. Uh, at a time in this university, 
you are in 300 level. You haven't seen your 100 level results yet. How many people pass through BSU like that? At a time. Until subsequent administration say, this thing cannot continue. And some measures were adopted to facilitate early marking of scripts. But these days, I think even the, with the coming of ICT and all of that, results come out uh, early, you know what your performance before you are getting to the next class. That's very, very important. Maintain it from that place. Do not punish learners by making them to lose lessons. Next slide. What is this child doing? This child misbehaves in the class. And all that the teacher will do to that child is to ask the, the child to sit down and be looking somewhere else. Why teaching is going on? Don't punish a child like that. A child has come to school late. Say, since you have come late, go back home. Or go and sit outside there. Or go and cut grass on the field while lesson is going on. Don't do like that. Is that okay? Next slide. Minimize the use of corporal punishment. Many times it hardens the children rather than correcting them. You know that when you are fond of beating children, the children also devise means that they become hardened. I know that as I'm going now, my teacher is going to beat me. They will wear one pant, wear another one, put a boxer, put something else, and they come. You have misbehaved. Yes, so what else? Please beat me. And then when you put it, you say, you say Pah! When you do it, you say, Pah! You say, it is not reaching his skin, no. And after that, you say, is that not all? The child will not change. So let's not be using corporal punishment all the time. Make sure that you fully prepare for each lesson you appear in class to teach. There should be no crash program in lesson delivery. The misses you make in the process may be indelible and also ruin your personality. What am I saying? You are going to teach. Prepare for that class. Prepare your topic very well. Rehearse it very well. Make sure you understand what you are saying. I don't know whether you will feel like me as a teacher. That when I have taught something and I didn't teach it well, and the children go home with the wrong impression, wrong knowledge, and they go home and tell somebody else, uh, our teacher told us today that uh, 7 times 4 is 35. You, your teacher says so? Yes, now, look at. I, I, I wrote it like that and he, he marked it good. And the father of that said, excuse me, ma, uh, 7 times 4 is what? He said it's 35. Do you didn't hear me well? I said, what is 7? He said it's 35. He's like the kind of teacher he's teaching our children. It's not correct. Is that okay? So be sure of what you teach, especially now that we have the internet. Knowledge is everywhere. Anything you teach now, anybody can find it out. So we must, as teachers, be careful what knowledge we are transmitting to the learners because they can find out, and if it is wrong, it will affect our personality very badly. Next slide. Corporal punishment. The man is using his whole strength to beat this small baby. Can you see this? Next slide. Evaluation. What is evaluation? You have been, all of you know, apart from my professor, all of you know how to write lesson notes. I you know that towards the end of your lesson note, in fact, virtually the last thing before assignment is evaluation. What does evaluation say? That all you have taught, how much of fit have these children got? And you match your questions with the performance objectives, your behavioral objectives, isn't it? So it is on the basis of testing those things that you can assess the success of your lesson. Is that okay? But here, I want you as a teacher, because your evaluation in the lesson plan is about the learners. But you yourself, you have to evaluate yourself. One thing you should do to yourself is to also ask yourself, how have I performed? How will you know how you have performed? Ask your students. 
Don't let them write their names. Distribute some papers and say, uh, my punctuality to class, if you are rating me one out of five, what will you, what will you put? Marking and returning of scripts, how will you rate me one to five? Eh? Teaching and making my subject clear to the class, how will you rate me? Then all those kind of things. My appearance in class, the way I dress, how will you rate me? So, do all those kind of things. Give the form to the students. Tell them, don't write your, your, your name and submit. I don't want you to see, to bring it. Just put it in this box. And then later on, you go there and carry those things. Honestly, go through them. As you go through them, you will see where your children are not rating you well. It is not for you to call them and knock their head. I think you people say that, uh, I don't know who wrote this, you know, but I know that some of you say that. I'm not, who are you to do this? Uh -uh. If you do that, you won't be a good teacher. <laughs> My time is running out. I don't want to tell you more of this. Now, uh, don't take offense. If they have negative comments on you, humble yourself when you see your weaknesses and then improve on them. Assess yourself on what impact or influence your personality has made on your students. It is by this assessment that you will not be able to say what impact you have made on your pupils, what influence you have made on them, how much of you they are going to imitate. It is this assessment that will help you. Then remember that you are God's agent for transformation of lives in the schools. Your reward is both here and is also in the hereafter. Did you get that last sentence? Did you get that last sentence? Your reward is here. Do you know that? If I'm robbers are looking for houses to go, once they know that this one is a teacher, they won't go there. And you sleep with your eyes closed. Is that not a reward? Well, when you go <laughs> when you go for lunching when you go for lunching nobody will make you as a teacher as the chief luncher <laughs> when they are doing community development somebody to bring electricity somebody to sing boho nobody will call the teacher so the little that you have you spend it very well and enjoy a cooler then when you have finished from here for teaching children very well, teaching them the word of God, making them to be godly in the hereafter, God will say welcome and wear them. My good and faithful servant. Is that okay? Last slide. So the conclusion here is that the classroom is an organic space which is meant for meaningful interaction between the members, which include the teacher and the learners. The classroom activities are meant to foster psychosocial development of members when they are properly managed. It is in this regard that vital tips have been given, are provided for all teachers so as to enhance their duties in the school. And it is for posterity. Is that okay? Finally. So who are you? Who are you? <laughs> there are some people who are teachers now and they are looking for every available opportunity to run away. If you are here and you are one of them, please settle down. Calm down. <laughs> Things will be well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And please enjoy yourself. I don't know whether it is at this point I can take one or two questions or it's coming up somewhere later. Can I take one or two questions? Okay, thank you very much. I have spoken virtually about everyday things that everybody almost knows. But sometimes even in these elementary and fundamental things, there are some questions that are bothering our minds. Is there any one or two of such things that bother your mind as a teacher? And you want to just ask. So that together we'll rub minds. Give some quick answers. And I will sit down. Can I have anybody who has a question to ask? Hey, I'll be very happy if there is no question. Because it will tell me that yes, I have taught very well. 
Eh? Thank you very much and clap hands for yourselves. God bless you. Oh, there's a question there. Oh, oh, it was by the wall. Yes, can I hear you? Sir, you said something that maybe when a class is going on and a child commits an offense and commits an offense maybe the child is making noise or something they're doing something else and you ask the child to maybe sit and face the wall or back the class I don't know in such situations what are you expected to do okay what do I expect you to do yes as a teacher okay. what punishment okay Are you listening to me? Did you hear her question very well? I had said that. Don't give punishment to a child that excludes that child from the lesson that is going on. The reason is that what you are teaching now, you are not going to repeat it when that child eventually changes his or her mind. So, you deprive her from a, a lifetime of op opportunity to learn something. You know, when you are teaching, children are not only learning the subjects you are teaching, they are not only learning the topics that you are teaching, they are waiting eagerly to imitate the entire personality of the teacher. But this child is no longer around to see any of those things. And I say it's not correct. So her question is, so what do you want me to do? She has been making noise. We have told her to keep quiet, as if you to keep quiet. So what will I do? My people have an adage that uh, any, any, any firewood that is uh, smoking so much, you remove it and throw it away. So what do we do? Can somebody help us to make an attempt? Yes, thank you. Okay, good morning, every oh, good day. Um, depend, number one, depend on the age of the child. Secondly, you are teaching and a child is disturbing. There are things you will do. Either you ask all of them to stand up, do a little exercise, and sit down. Or if the child is not willing to pay any form of attention at all, number one, you can ask the child, pick your chair, sit down here maybe in the front or somewhere that you feel the child will be able to pay attention. Now, exercise you can give at this moment is either they sing, dance, go around the class. Con, are you happy? All these little, little things. That is why I said first. It depends on the age of the children she is referring to. Okay. That is my contribution or advice. Okay. Thank you very much for that brilliant response. By all means, whatever thing you want to do by punishing or disciplining that child, don't exclude that child from an ongoing lesson. She has made some suggestions as to what to do. What was on my mind initially was that if the child was there and because she feels or he feels that he's in the midst of people, he's hiding to make noise, tell him or her to bring her, his or her chair forward where you are. That child should be afraid of you, he won't be making that noise. Is that okay? And if the child came, is forming a habit of coming to school late, and you think that you want to stop that habit by sending him back home. No. There is much more to it. You can even go ahead to investigate from the home why this child is coming at this time, but not to tell the child to go back home. Do you understand? Or go and cut grass. In our time, if you commit any offense, what will happen is that they will write your name down. If it is not something, they will just cane you. They will keep you. When the school dismisses and other people are going home, you will not go home. That is the time you go and cut grass. It was, the, it was a time when the whole community and society was very safe. You can't do so this time around. You will go and cut grass and from there you won't see him again. 
and the parents will ask you, are we satisfied? Are we satisfied? Okay, thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you. There's 